What's up everybody, Clint Esposito here. We're gonna go over why you should fire your trainer if he tells you to drink a Coca-Cola on the podium. All right, so a while ago, I saw this picture. Um, I don't think it had stuff on it yet, but I saw this picture. Um, of Dylan Fernandez drinking a Coke on the podium. And everybody's like, uh, you know, oh, remember years ago, uh, Austin Forkner was eating uh, pixie sticks in between um, motos for a, uh, I want to say triple crown. That's not what it's called. Whatever the three race races are. So they were doing that. Forkner's drink, eating pixie sticks in between. Dylan Fernandez is doing this. And the theory is that uh, it is replenishing the sugar in your muscles so that you can perform at optimal ranges or whatever you want to say. So here we have a little sports performance bulletin. Uh, is Coca-Cola an effective sports drink? Top athletes seem to love Coke, not just as a dinner drink to wash down a cup of yogurt, a cinnamon raisin bagel, and a bowl of broccoli. What? None of those seem like... This is just to start off the ass hattery. What athletes are drinking or eating cinnamon raisin bagels and a bowl of broccoli, dude? What the hell is going on? Why Coke is so popular. At first glance, it seems like an unlikely sports drink candidate. Its carbohydrate content checks in at about 11%, a bit too high for a sports beverage. Exercise scientists have identified 9 to 5% as the optimal range for sport drink carbohydrate concentrates. Beyond 9%, gastric emptiness is retarded. This... I can't even take it. I can't believe they would use that. It just means slow down, people. That's all it means. Slow down. If you're timing on your bike, you can advance it or retard it. That's there's two ways to go. Uh, and water may even be dragged into the gut to dilute the excess carbs, robbing tissue and blood of fluid. In addition, Coke offers little in the way of electrolytes. And its carbonation is thought to increase the risk risk of gastric upset during exercise. Finally, Coke's acidic content and artificial colors make the beverage in the red and white can an improbable choice for serious athletes. Only in the 150 milligram of caffeine range was able to dramatically boost blood levels of free fatty acids at 22%, an effect which some sports scientists have suggested would enhance endurance performance. The fatty acids might serve as a rich load of energy as muscle glycogen stores become depleted. Smaller quantities of caffeine, 22.5 to 35 milligram raised fatty acids by just 6% and fats stayed consistent when no caffeine was in cola. It's the caffeine that counts. So why is Coke so popular with athletes? The research shows that Coke's carbonation is not especially troublesome during exercise and most athletes de it anyway. Coke's carbohydrate can keep muscles working as glycogen levels plummet. And if Coke is mixed half and half with Gatorade, for example, which some athletes do, the resulting mixture possesses a carbohydrate content of about 8.6 to 8.7%, which is within the optimal range of carbohydrate concentrates. But no doubt, the real appeal of Coke is due to its caffeine. As mentioned, a 12-ounce slug of Coke has between 30 and 45 milligrams of caffeine, slightly less than the increasingly popular Mountain Dew. As regular readers of Sports Performance Bulletin are aware, caffeine has been shown to 
be performance enhancing in a variety of different studies and it continues to buy with creatine for the position of the hottest legal ergogenic aid available to athletes. In the past three years, research shows that caffeine can jazz up 1,500 meter running performances, improve interval workouts, heighten 100 meter swim times, bolster sprints like blah, blah, blah. Seems that, and I've written through a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to sit here and read it all. I will post all these links, but it seems that, yes, you do need glucose for your muscles, 100%. But it also seems that the caffeine um, does a lot of things to improve performance. Let me go through because there's a lot to unpack here. Okay, here are the ingredients in Coca-Cola. Citrate caffeine um, is the first one we're going to go over. No, citrate caffeine, we'll get to that later. Uh, caramel coloring, let's get that. So... Okay, you're getting the sugar, you're getting whatever, but my issue is that caramel coloring, rating, avoid. Coloring colas, baked goods, pre-baked, pre-cooked meats, soy, Worcestershire sauces, chocolate flavored products, beer. Caramel coloring is made by heating a sugar compound, usually high dextrose corn syrup, often together with ammonium compounds, acid or alk. Alcus, I don't know how to say that. It is the most widely used by weight coloring added to foods and beverages. Caramel coloring when produced with ammonia contains contaminants, two methyl, I don't know, and four, also I don't know. In 2017, studies by the U.S. National Toxicology Program found that those two contaminants cause cancer in male and female rice, mice and possibly in female rats. In 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a division of the World Health Organization, concluded that 2 and 4 blah, 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 are possibly carcinogenic to humans. Then, the State of California Environmental Protection Agency limited ammonia caramel coloring as a carcinogen under the state's Proposition 65. The state lists chemicals when they pose a lifetime risk of at least one cancer per 100,000 people. California warned as of January 7, 2012, 11 years ago, widely consumed products such as soft drinks that contain more than 29 micrograms of 4 blah, 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 per serving would have to bear a warning notice. In March 2012, when CSPI published the results of a study that found levels of levels up to 150 milligram, milligrams per can of Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola purchased in Washington, D.C., the soft drink giants announced they have reduced the contaminant to below California's threshold for action in products distributed in California. They said they would market the less contaminated products throughout the country, with co which Coca-Cola did in 2013 and, co and PepsiCo did by 2015. The FDA has a limit that is 10 times as strict as California's regulating chemicals that are contaminated with cancer-causing chemicals. CS. PI's analysis of Coca-Cola purchased in 2012 in California found just 4 micrograms of 4MI per 12 ounces. Even that much lower level might exceed the FDA's threshold for action of 1 cancer per million consumers. It would be worth avoiding or drinking less colas and other ammonium caramel colored beverages not only because of the risk from four blah 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 but of course because the products contained about 10 teaspoons of sugar per 12 ounces and promote obesity and tooth decay soy sauces baked goods and other foods that contain ammoniated caramel caramel coloring are much less of a problem because the amounts consumed are small yet yeah, again let's just say this the amount in the can meets the meets the uh FDA standards or whatever, right? But they also talked about all these other things that also have caramel coloring in it. 
So what I'm saying is by the end of the day, the week, the month, you've probably far exceeded what they say you should have. Just saying. You're, they're, they're worried about the amount of one product, yet you are consuming multiple products that have this. Okay, that's no good, obviously. Now, we have citric acid, which is also another citric acid. It is a one, two, three, four, fifth ingredient. The answer is pretty simple. Citric acid can enhance the flavor of products and somehow reduce their sweetness. This way, the products with citric acid tend to taste better. This is why it is very commonly included in sports drinks, and many athletes prefer products that contain it. However, there are some important drawbacks to consider. Mainly, it hurts your teeth. It also hinders the gastric emptying of the ingested beverage so that absorption of both water and carbohydrates could be negatively affected. Isn't that why we're drinking the Coca-Cola so that we can absorb the uh, carbohydrates, aka sugar? So if you care about long-term health of your teeth and optimal carbohydrate absorption, which is what this, we are told you're drinking Coca-Cola after your moto is so that you can get the sugars, aka carbohydrates, back into your body to replenish your muscles, yet it clearly has something in it that hinders the absorption of that. It's better to go without citric acid. On the other hand, if you don't consume high amounts of carbohydrate drinks every day, you can enjoy the refreshing taste provided by... If you, I don't understand what that sentence has anything to do with anything. So, Coca-Cola, citrate caffeine. What is citrate caffeine, you say? Citrate, caffeine citrate, C-A-F-C-I-T, is a medication that works well for treating breathing problems in premature babies. It's a medication, but it's usually used for a short period of time. This medication is typically given to your baby in the neonatal intensive care unit. It's available as an injection into the vein. There are also oral solutions form of caffeine citrate for premature babies who have a feeding tube or can swallow. Sometimes caffeine citrate can cause side effects like restlessness, jitteriness, faster heartbeat, and more diaper wetting than normal. And this even says that the amount of caffeine in a Coke is less than a cup of instant coffee. See where I'm going there? I guess regular coffee is not quite as much. Glucose. Okay, where does glucose come from? Glucose is most common monosaccharide found in nature. In plants, it is generated through photosynthesis. Some plants store glucose in link chains. These chain chains are called starch. Common starch-containing foods include corn, potatoes, rice, and wheat. Starch is commonly separated from these whole food sources to make dextrose. Glucose, maldextrins, palos, and high fructose corn syrup to be used as ingredients in the production of some foods, beverages, dressings, and sauces. Glucose monosaccharides, not as part of starch, are also found naturally in some foods. The most concentrated whole food source of glucose monosaccharides is honey, followed by dried fruits such as dates, apricots, raisins, currants, I don't even know what that is, uh, cranberries, prunes, and figs. So, tons of ways to get uh, glucose naturally without having chemicals mixed together or whatever. So now, I found a uh, PubMed, uh, the effects of coffee components on muscle glycogen recovery. Coffee is the most consumed beverage, is one of the most consumed beverages in the world, and it can improve insulin sen sensitivity, stimulating glucose uptake into skeletal muscles 
when adequate carbohydrate intake is observed. So like we said, there obviously has to be carbohydrates there. Obviously not too much, right? Because you can't get over the 10% mark per your beverage or we're not able to process it quite as well. Basically what I'm showing is that it's more caffeine than the sugar. The aim of this review is to analyze the effects of coffee and coffee components on muscle glu glycogen metabolism. A literature search was conducted according to preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis, and several studies were included that explored the effects of coffee components on various substances and signaling proteins. In one of the studies with humans, caffeine was shown to increase glucose levels, calmodulin-dependent protein kinase, dude, glycogen uh, resynthesis rates, and glycogen accumulation after exercise. After intravenous injection of caffeine in rats, caffeine increased androcene monophosphate, activated protein kinase and acetyl-CoA carbolase bro and glucose transport in in vitro studies caffeine raised AMPK that was the whole thing that they showed the uh, androcene monophase activated protein intake caffeine raised AMPK and ACC phosphorylation, increased glucose transport activity, and reduced energy status in rat muscle cells. Cafestol and caffic acid increased insulin secretion in, beta, in rat beta cells and glucose uptake in human muscle cells. Caffic acid also increased AMPK and ACC, uh, reducing the energy status and increasing glucose uptake in rat muscle cells. Did I just read that over? Chlorogenic acid did not show any positive or negative effects. The finding from this review must be taken with caution due to limited studies. So, we have found out that it's more so... The caffeine, you, you need to get sugar back into your muscles. Yes, because you are burning it. Um, and your body can make it itself, but it's a longer process and you're going to deplete your, yourself of other things. So it's more so the caffeine that's doing it. And here's my whole, here's my whole point with all of this. The raw truth about post-workout sugar. Now this is men's health, which I totally believe is funded by big sugar. Um, because this, uh, is their, this is their, um, explanation of what types of things to eat to replace glucose or glycogen in your, uh, muscles post-workout. Hit, Haribo, yes, the gummies, the gummy candies. Glucose is the best, glucose is the best form of sugar. And it's what our muscles burn during a workout, meaning that they're ready to reabsorb it like a sponge. For best results, opt for Tang Fastics. Maybe not a sharer bag. Okay. Fructose is difficult for the liver to process. This is honey, is a miss. Honey is a miss. Fructose. Is difficult for the liver to process, and after a certain point, it turns into fat, as well as dampening the metabolism. Basically, you'll, you'll have to hit the gym all over again. Where was the other thing on? Uh, our bodies require glucose to function. Glucose monosac monosaccharides, not as part of starch, are also found naturally in some foods. The most concentrated whole food source of glucose monosaccharides is honey. Fructose, honey, miss. Fructose is difficult for the liver to process. Let me go back over to this one again. The most concentrated whole food source of glucose monosaccharides is honey. Why? Why does Men Health say this? Why does it say this? And why 
Okay, hit. Glucose gels. In most cases, they have plenty of fat to metabolize into energy, but it isn't the most effective way during aerobic exercise. Glucose is a better fuel, but we can only store so much of it. So give yourself a top up mid run. Wait, so you can eat a whole bag of Haribo gummies with food dyes, which we know are carcinogens, probably um, uh, preservatives, which I'm sure are no good for you. That's okay. But if you eat honey, if you eat too much honey though, I mean, I feel like the same exact thing could be said for any of these. If you eat maybe not a sharer bag of Haribo, I bet if you ate the sharer bag, you'd probably also have to go back to the gym to burn that off. Why do they say that about honey and not Haribo? Because Haribo sponsored Men Health or whoever owns it. It definitely is, because look at this one. Isotonic drinks, unless you've been running for, an, now isotonic drinks is just something like Gatorade. Gatorade allegedly has the same viscosity as our blood, which I looked it up. That's all that uh, isotonic means, is that it same, has the same type of ratios between sugar and blah, 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 and this and that as our blood does. But isotonic drinks, unless you've been running over an hour, stick to protein shakes. You can rehydrate from short, shorter sessions by sipping water to avoid the hinted sugars on top of those in your shake. So we're worried about the hidden sugars in, in Gatorade. We're not worried about um, gummy bears. Okay, so... Now, we'll go here. If you noticed, most of the caffeines that they went over are synthetic. So here we have uh, synthetic forms of caffeine. Caffeine andreas. Which, these are a caffeine citrate, which is what they use in Coke. Decaffeine malate. This is a supplement in Finergy. Here we go, botanical sources. So this is now the most commonly used plant sources of caffeine, along with the plant part or parts most often used and naturally occurring concentration of caffeine found in the plant on a dry basis. I've listed the plants in order of highest to lowest dose of naturally occurring caffeine. Tea extract. Other uh, names. Camellia sinensis. Sinensis? I don't know. Green tea, green tea extract, black tea, chai, cha, oolong tea. Parts, the leaf or the shoot. Naturally occurring caffeine is 4.8 to 9.3%. What you need to know, ever since ephedrine was removed from the industry, the use of tea extracts has increased exponentially. Unfortunately, you won't know the caffeine contribution from a tea ingredient with a formulation unless the company marketing the product includes it on the label. No shit. Metrex's green tea extract. Again, why do we, why can't we just drink green tea? Guarana, uh, naturally occurring caffeine dose, 6.7%. What you need to know, Guarana is typically quite soluble in water and it often uses used as flavoring component because it provides a fruity aroma and a tangerine-like flavor. This combined with its caffeine content makes it popular ingredient in RTDs, I don't know what that is, and other energy drinks. Coffee extract, coffee, arabica, green coffee extract, pure calf, naturally occurring caffeine, 3.2%. So that's not very much in coffee, you'd have to drink probably a bit. What you need to know, depending upon the finished product's primary purpose, stimulant, fat burn, or antioxidant, uh, and anti-inflammatory, the caffeine content of coffee exact may be concentrated at as high as 98% or not concentrated at all and standardized to less than 2% total caffeine. If you're explicitly looking for a natural alternative to synthetic caffeine andreas that provides the same performance effects, coffee extracts may provide it. But read labels closely to make sure you're not getting to make sure you're getting what you think. 
all their um, knocks on the natural stuff is bullshit. It's just like, we don't, we're not sure how much is in there. Oh, make sure you're getting what you want. Cola. Naturally occurring caffeine dose 2.5%. What you need to know. If you see cola not listed as an ingredient with an energy blend or formula, it's more like more than likely an extract standardized to 10 to 20% caffeine. Aside from the caffeine, cola extracts typically provide a nutty taste, odor, and brownish appearance to whatever it is mixed with. The fact that soda flavored products are generically referred to as cola is no coincidence. Bottom line, if you have a non-synthetic caffeine source is important you, to you, cola could fit the bill. Plus, it can help increase oxygen levels in the blood and promote better concentration. Just be uh, aware of the potential downsides. Did they not, they don't, what are the, what are the potential downsides? You didn't even, didn't even say it. But I do like the fact of this, uh, it has caffeine, but then what did it also say? Oh, here is one of the other things. No data in humans compares the effects of cola nut to pure caffeine. But what is available within rodent and canine studies seem to indicate a similar response versus pure caffeine. For example, pure caffeine has been shown to be equally as effective as cola nut at decreasing body weight and increasing glucose uptake into skeletal muscles. Which is again, why we're drinking the Coke, right? One potential downside of cola nut extract has been observed though six weeks of human equivalent dose of 0.15 milligrams blah, 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 per body weight per day was shown to significantly reduce sperm count, testosterone, and luteinizing hormone in male rats. So what is this? Cola. Doesn't sound good. You want your testosterone if you want to work out. Mate, which is yerba mate. Don't ask me why they call it that. 2%. What you need to know about yerba mate, like Camellia sinensis, is most commonly consumed as tea and is reported to provide reported to provide many of the same benefits. The research, however, is predominantly in rodent models and has assessed the ingredients' effects on obesity, inflammation, blood lipids, antioxidants. Blah blah. blah. What I'm saying: there are other sources of caffeine you could get not only helps you, and I'm assuming this is now the, the, I always heard that obviously people take caffeine before they work out, but I've always heard that um, it's good for recovery as well. And this may be some of the thing uh, is just that you're able to um, get the glucose into your muscles. All right, so now we know that men's health is co-opted by Haribo candies. So we go to Scientific American. Honey heightens athletic performance. What? If you've been buying sports gels to keep you going during your workout, you might want to try honey instead. According to findings presented today at the annual experimental bio biology conference, honey delivers a significant performance boost to athletes during strenuous exercise. Numerous studies have singled out carbohydrates as a critical nutrient in endurance exercise, says principal invest investigator Richard Kreider of the University of Memphis Exercise and Sports Nutrition Laboratory. Most of the studies to date have shown supplementation with glucose to provide the extra staying power. We were pleased to find that honey, a cocktail of various natural sugars, performed just as well. The team let nine competitive male cyclists cycle for 64 kilometers each week for three weeks, feeding them honey, dextrose gel, or a flavored calorie-free placebo. Partic participants received 15 grams of that supplement along with 250 milliliters of water before they raced, and then every 16 kilometers while cycling. Both the honey and the dextrose gel led to better times and more cycling power among the athletes as compared with placebo effects. While the dextrose gel slightly outperformed honey, the difference was negligible, leading to researchers to conclude that honey can be a natural and effective carbohydrate source for endurance athletes. <sighs> so tell me again, why are people drinking Coca-Cola? 
right? You have citric acid that hinders your absorption of carbohydrates, which we're told is the whole reason that we're drinking this. My whole point is, do, like, people, stop listening to shitheads like men's health, obviously. I stopped following them a long time ago because I started seeing stuff. I'm like, I know that's not true. Just, I'm just trying to be like, look into natural alternatives to any of this stuff. What you're getting out of it is glucose. You can eat, they listed uh, dates, um, apricots, uh, a bunch of other fruits. So why not stop? And even, even if you want to take, the other thing that I was going for is, even the caffeine in Coca-Cola is synthetic caffeine. And again, I, I, we're getting off into the weeds, but I guarantee you I could search and find issues with the synthetic caffeine. I mean, just that one caffeine that they were given to kids, there was a bunch of uh, issues with it. You know, a bunch of side effects, including breathing issues, all, all types of stuff. So, like I said, and, and I'm a woo-woo nature boy or whatever you want to clap categorize me as but we have to stop having all these synthetic products and unfortunately the people that we're going to for advice aka men's health and i'm sure a lot of other things are co-opted by these companies paying them to promote their products the fitness and the medical in uh industries have just been ransacked with you know false information about this stuff because people with a lot of money into the products don't want everybody to go i'm not having that it's got cancer in it so that's it everybody um like i said get yourself even if you want to do some kind of caffeine pill or something fine do the caffeine pill get rid at least get rid of the the shitty uh, source of sugar and get rid of the caramel coloring and whatever else is in there that we didn't research. You can fuel yourself to be an athlete with just steaks, fruits, honey, and caffeine. That's it. That's it. Um, so there you go. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. If your trainer tells you to drink Coke after your race, be like, hit the bricks, son. I'm not getting cancer because... You didn't do any research. All right, everybody. Leave a comment. Let me know what's up. <laughs>